tonight on Evening Magazine. It's the greatest day of celebration in Seattle history, and Evening Magazine is right in the middle of it all. And here we are with hundreds of thousands of our best friends. <laughs> we are world champs. How's that feel? It's a party on 4th Avenue. That's right, we're celebrating the Super Bowl champs who have made this entire city feel like a bunch of winners. I don't know if you can tell, Mike, but we are not alone. That is true, Dave. There are hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people here lining 4th Avenue, including all of us here at Team Evening Magazine. That's right, Jim and Kim have staked their spots on the parade route. Let's begin with Kim. Kim, where are you? Hey, you guys, I am at 4th and Columbia, and it is bananas here, right? Kidding. And Jim Dever is somewhere here along the parade route, too. Where are you, Jimmy? Hey, Kim, I'm out near Westlake Park, where the energy has just been electric today, not just here, but all over town. Check out the celebration. First, we got to clear off 4th Ave. The giant Seahawks semi, the tiny truck, the Hawks hearse. Overheard one fan say he thought Peyton Manning might be in there. Ouch. Some reports say a million strong. Even the men in black are in the spirit. So how long you been here? About 6.15 this morning. Yeah. See, you left so early that you left your PJs on. Yeah, I mean, I ran out of bed. I had to make it to the Seahawks parade, you know? Breakfast was served complete with Skittles, provided by none other than Marshawn Lynch. So did anyone throw anything at you that, that you had to have the helmets on? Yeah, we thought Skittles might be. Oh, everywhere. Skittles, I got it. Right. But you were safe. Uh, yep. Yes. <laughs> I actually think I see goosebumps on you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. A little bit cold out here. So, do you think this is, has it been a good idea? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely worth it. Sure. it. It's a lot better than school. <laughs> My mom wanted us to be here because she said it was like part of the history and they might never win the Super Bowl again, so. You can't even describe. The, the, just the, the all-encompassing support and love and spirit of everybody. It's amazing. It's an amazing day. What's up, man? What up, Trump, man? We here, baby. Hey, this is what we do. We here, baby. Hey, we bring everybody out. We bring everybody out. They were in the trees to see Coach Russell Richard. And, of course, the prize. No, no, that one's fake. There's the real deal. What a party. Beth Hughes and Yvonne Bush got here plenty early. They've staked out a front row seat. Now, uh, Yvonne, you were here for the 79 parade with yeah. the Sonics championship. What was that like, and how does this compare? Uh, this is way bigger, way bigger, yeah. <laughs> yes, let's toss it back to Saint and Michael. Back to you guys. Thank you, Jim. This victory parade is not just a result of days of planning, but years of planning on the part of head coach Pete Carroll. It's really true. They had a plan and they saw it through. And Russell Wilson, who's right over here, there's Russell, he, he actually said from the very first day of practice that every day is a championship day. That's true. And every single one of those Super Hawks, Super Bowl champions you saw, they were drafted in late rounds or not drafted at all. They're the kind of players who came into the NFL with something to prove like Russell Wilson. And see, Russell reminds me of kind of a key number for the Seahawks going forward, the number 25, because Russell Wilson, Percy Harvin, Cam Chancellor, Richard and Richard Sherman, Sherman they're all, Richard Sherman, who wears number 25, right. they're also all 25 years old. So these guys are young, they're hungry, they're ready to go. This is a team with years and years to go, right? Yeah, a lot of people are talking, throwing around the word dynasty. I don't know about that, but we'll see. All it right. also reminds me of the 06 team. That team was kind of old, to be honest with you. I mean, they were kind of at the end of their careers. Now these guys are just getting started. Right, and they're a lot of fun to follow. They've got great personalities. I like to follow them on Twitter. And here are some of the tweets that they put out today. From Super Bowl MVP Malcolm Smith, wow, there are a gazillion Seahawks fans here. You guys are undoubtedly the best fans in the NFL or any sport for that matter. From Golden Tate, 12s, I wouldn't be surprised if we set a world record for loudest sport event. From Pete Carroll, the 12s are out in full force on this beautiful day for a celebration. And this is kind of cool, Saint. The key word is boom, boom, 35 years apart. 
On Sports Illustrated in 1979, when the Sonics won the title, you see Gus Williams there, and it says, boom time in Seattle. All right, and then this week it also says, boom on the cover. Ball Hawk in Seattle takes its place loudly in the pantheon of dominant Super Bowl champs, and it's just the start. Oh, yeah. So, I guess the key word for the Hawks as we take our first time out is boom. Give me a boom. Jimmy Fallon stops by King TV and shares some of his favorite late night moments later. And a look back at the last time we had a celebration like this. Next. Trophy to our fair city, our fairly cold city, actually. Yeah, but you can just sense the warmth of the fans. Let's see what Kim's up to. Hi, Kim. Yeah, hey, you guys. You know, it has been more than three decades since we saw Woo! an event like this. A lot of these people weren't even born when the Sonics were world champions. But the important thing for Seattle is do not commit a foul here. There's no room for error in game five of the 1979 NBA championship. 12 seconds. Here we go. Playing at home, the Washington Bullets trail the Seattle Supersonics by four points. Off with the shot, Sonics control. With that, Seattle runs out the clock. Five, four. To become world champs for the first time. Let the celebration begin in Seattle. It is over. Back home, a sonic boom rocks the city. Seattle celebrates up and down the street. More than 300,000 fans show up to see their team parade down 4th Avenue and share the unforgettable feeling of being the best in the world. I'd just like to uh, thank everyone and uh, uh, I'd really like to make a habit of this. This is good. Thanks. As we know now, it would be a long wait before a party like this happened again. Safe to say this celebration rivaled that one and then some. It is a perfect day, right? <laughs> Beautiful, cold, but we don't care because it is the absolutely perfect day to celebrate a championship. Back to you, St. Michael. All right, thanks, Kim. So we can say we are partying like it's 1979. Yeah, we are. With all due respect, though, to Sonics fans, this is a football town. So this is kind of a bigger deal. And I'll tell you, it is an absolute sports guy's dream to be able to cover a Super Bowl. Right. Well, Paul Sylvie and Chris Egan both got to cover the Super Bowl, and they share some of their memories right now. From a from a Seahawks perspective, I'll, I'll give you a story that I haven't shared with anybody. And that's all secret. That's all. Uh, did this really happen? This can't be happening to me. I guess my perspective was, wow. I think what I saw during the the week there at the Super Bowl is that this team was ready. I can sense when it's when it's on, and the players can feel it too. Pete went as far as to do a the fake halftime speech on Friday and made them sit in the middle of practice for 29 minutes to time the halftime so they would be able to go back on the field and perform. They knew what to do in the biggest stage of the world. But I will tell you that the one guy that, that would never break his game face was Earl Thomas. It just makes me want to just keep evolving and keep being at my best. Or every answer we heard from Earl was all about attack, attack, attack. When you get success like this, you want more success. And even when we asked, talked to him after the game, he said, we're going to go back and look at the film and get ready for next year. I'm like, Earl, it's over. You just won. You take your foot off the gas. So much was made this past week about Marshawn Lynch and him not wanting to talk to the media. I was there right after the game, and he kind of looked at me, and he goes, Mama, where's Mama? And I said, you want to find your mom? And he goes, yeah, yeah, where's my mom? So I actually took Marshawn with me onto the field and found his mom, and he's like, okay, we gotta go find grandma now. You know, I mean, it was just a, it was just a great place to be. The flags are flying, the blue and green lights were everywhere. All men, you know, I usually don't like to do this, but I grabbed some confetti and put it in my pocket, and I said, I'm gonna keep that confetti for the rest of my life. Don't say, cut it. I'm, this is inside information. And even though I knew I had to do a job and I had to go get players, I just had to pause for a second, look up, and I'm like, wow, this, this really did happen. Paul and Chris's next big assignment is bringing us back stories from the Winter Games. Coverage on King 5 of the Olympics starts tomorrow night. Yeah, and among our team of reporters headed to Sochi is a new but familiar face. Slipping into her uniform for the Winter Olympics, Ariana Kukers is all smiles. 
The yellow jacket feels so good. And it's so funny, being a Pacific Northwest native, I've seen these jackets and, you know, it, it represents the Olympics. She will be wearing our signature jacket in Sochi, Russia, where she'll join the King 5 News team and report from the Winter Games. She brings with her the experience of a star athlete. Ariana, a celebrated swimmer from Auburn, set a world record in the 200-meter individual medley, a race with a combination of strokes. At the Summer Games in London, she competed in that same event. Ariana came in fifth there. No medal, no matter. Upon returning home, Auburn rolled out the red carpet for their Olympia. Moments like this, Ariana can never forget. And that's what she hopes to share from Sochi. I feel so fortunate that I was able to experience that. I know what it's like on the other side of the fence. I achieved my Olympic dream. And now being on the other side and you know, really thinking through, what do I wish someone had asked me? What was I feeling in this moment? Knowing what they're going through, knowing how amazing it is to have the support of a community, of a country behind you. So I'm excited to share those moments with them, to really capture it and to tell everyone back home what's going on. Get to know your favorite Seahawks off the field later. And Jimmy Fallon is in Seattle with stories of his favorite late night moments after this. Welcome back to the show from the Seahawks Victory Parade in downtown Seattle. And everybody loves a parade, right? Especially Jim Dever. Hey, Jim. Hey, guys. You know, I, I lost my voice for about a month during the playoffs and the Super Bowl. And here I am again today, shouting, big day, big day. And it, it's a big night tomorrow night when Jay Leno says goodbye to The Tonight Show. Here's a look at some of our favorite moments with Jay Leno. Imagine our luck, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's, it's Jay Leno. Hi, Jay. Oh, no, Jay is here. Before his reign as the king of late night. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. We'll try to, we've uh, notified the authorities. Yeah. Jay Leno is a stand-up comic, on tour, making a stop in Seattle. Good to see you, Jay. Why, good to see you. You know, I uh, hadn't expected you to come tonight to uh, film this. King Five's Almost Live is there to greet him at the airport. Now, That's something they... I always want to do. Hey, 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 I said no cameras. <laughs> Six years after this encounter, Leno is named the new host of The Tonight Show, taking over for Johnny Carson. I gotta go to work, you guys. When we meet again on the set in Burbank, 30 seconds. Leno, who now rules late night, gives us a minute-by-minute -minute look at what goes on behind the scenes. Make us look good, all right? Then there's that brief blip in his career when his show moves to prime time to make room for Conan O'Brien. Remember that? Hi, Jay, Jim. It seems like a good idea during this interview. We haven't had a shuffle like this since you uh, went and took over The Tonight yeah, Show. Yeah, it seems like the country has more pressing problems. But uh, yeah, I guess it's interesting, yeah, yeah. At least I get an autograph out of it. Oh, look at that. He even drew a little lantern-jawed entertainer. Quite a scare in Washington, D.C. today. You know, I never assume people are interested in me. They're interested in the jokes you have to say or the funny things that you're doing or who your guests are. Tomorrow, after 22 years as host, Leno will leave The Tonight Show, which means that autograph from way back could soar in value. Someday I might auction it off if I need the money. So Jay Leno's final Tonight Show is tomorrow in 12 days. Jimmy Fallon takes over the show. But Kim Holcomb had a chance to talk to Jimmy about some of his favorite moments from late night. It feels like there's such a genuine joy for you when you get to meet actors who maybe you haven't met before or talk to people who are of interest to you. Yeah. Is that, does that make it harder or easier to interview them when you are like totally psyched that you're finally meeting this person? It makes it a little harder because uh, you get, you do get intimidated by these stars and it's like, like, uh, you know, if we get Tom Cruise on the show. Yeah. You know? I am here with the one and only Tom Cruise. Uh, he came on the show and we wanted to pitch him this new game that we're gonna play called Egg Russian Roulette, where it's a dozen eggs and only two of the eggs are raw, the rest are hard boiled. Okay. You don't know which ones are which. And you pick one at a time and you crack it on your own head. You play the game. <laughs> First two eggs that he cracks his head are raw. <laughs> This can't man. be the second Get one. It's just it. be impossible. Come on, that, that would be impossible. It would be impossible. Oh, God! Is that it? Game's over. <laughs> it's covered in yolk. 
He goes, what? I go, you love, thanks for playing. I'm totally dry. I look totally perfect. He's like, why would he, why would he do this show ever again? What's wrong with you? And uh, now he's like a friend of the show. And But it's like, you know, you get over the uh, intimidation factor. But certain people like that, they're just like movie stars. And you see it and you're like, oh, my gosh. And I, hey, now, with Jimmy Fallon, please, thank you for being here, everybody. It doesn't have to even be the new hot celeb. It right. could be someone that you grew up always loving. And you go, I'd love to have them on. I also want to say something about when you get this age. Mm. Don't get down. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking to Bill Cosby, you just start morphing into Bill Cosby as you're talking. So now when you do the stand-up show, will you be coming to? And he goes, don't talk like me. That is me talking like you. But you're being me, but we're talking to each other. That looks, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> All right. That's what he had. That uh, looks like a, like a, no, poli no. a police, a police <laughs> uh, chalk drawing of a dead body. <laughs> There's been a murder. There's been a murder. And was he one of your first impressions? Because he seems like such a, a good person to learn how to do impressions from. Yeah, he was. Yeah. I mean, he was one. Rodney Dangerfield is another one of my first, too. Like, I would, when I was a kid, my parents would pay me like 50 cents to do jokes in front of uh, their parties. You know, if they're having a party in the house, like, did you, Rodney, do it? I'll give you 50 cents, you know, or whatever. <laughs> and I go, oh, I'll tell you, right? My wife's cooking so bad, you know? Since when does toast have bones? <laughs> I don't know, I've always been a fan of pop culture. Yeah. Whether it be music or movies or TV shows, I, I just, so I, I really do enjoy talking to people and saying, what, what do you think about that? Do you, did you like doing it? Is it? Yeah, yeah. What do we have to look forward to? You know, and I get to sometimes see the movies before they come out. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know, it's like I'm living in the future. It's yeah. Like I'm quantum leaping back <laughs> to my show to uh, have a conversation. But <laughs> This program is going to go on forever. If, if uh, you know, Steve Allen and Johnny Carson were still around, they'd be happy to see what we're doing with the show. And yeah. Keeping it uh, silly and, and, and just uh, absurd and, and entertaining because, I mean, Steve Allen was the first guy to lay in a giant bowl of ice cream with bananas, pretend he's a banana split, you know, and get chocolate he, way before Letterman was doing it. Right. Is, so, I mean, he would be psyched to see, like, oh, this is what we made the show for. Right. What your favorite Seahawks are like off the field when we come back. Transportation provided by Alaska Airlines, providing daily non-stops to Newark Liberty Airport, offering a hassle-free experience. Only 16 miles from Midtown Manhattan. Explore more, spend less at alaskaair.com. the Seahawks, but also of the fans who supported them. That's right, the 12th man, a big deal. I, I found, Saint, that one of the best ways to get to know the players, and these guys have a lot of personality, is to ask them questions they've never heard before. We call it Hawk Talk, and here are the highlights from this season. How about your ideal woman? My wife. Of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Describe what, what she's like. Uh, 5'3", blonde hair, blue eyes, um, unbelievable heart, uh, my best friend. Is there anything at all that your wife would change about you? Well, there's probably a lot, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm a piece of work for her, but um, I think uh, she would like me <laughs> to be able to stay on focus because she does this to me when I got to listen to her and then can't, you know, wander about. Right. about. I, I, she's, she's a victim of my ADD, you know. <laughs> if you weren't a football player, what would you be? No, I always wanted to be an FBI agent. Is it okay to touch a pregnant woman's belly? It seems like people think that's okay. Do you think it's okay? Yeah, if you ask for permission, I right. think it is. Yeah, okay, that's, that's good that you asked for permission. Just don't randomly go up and start <laughs> rubbing on it. Could you like the new turbo hand dryers? Oh, yeah, I, I love them. All right, if you could t talk face to face with God, what would you ask him? Where would I start? <laughs> First, I would thank him for making the new hand dryers. <laughs> that would be a big one. Excellent. Okay, would you rather have zero kids or 10 kids? 10. 10? Yeah. That'd be a house full of fun. It'd be a lot of fun, yeah. <laughs> Whom do the ladies think is the best looking guy on the team? The best? A lot of a lot of the ladies like Doug Baldwin for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> so you don't find him attractive? I don't find any guy really attractive. <laughs> <laughs> you want to clarify that? All right, cool. We will tell Doug he's safe. All right. Well, Jermaine, thank you very much. All right, thank All right. you. Jermaine, Jermaine Kurtz. 
<laughs> there was no good way to answer that question. <laughs> and my wife agrees, Doug Baldwin is the hottest Seahawks. That's what she thinks. I don't know. And all season we've been saying, go Hawks. We didn't specify exactly where. Well, they went all the way to the World Championship. Like, somehow this guy got a hold of the Lombardi Trophy. Wow. I think it's finally starting to sink in. We are Super Bowl champs. Yeah. We're, we're the best team in the world. How about that? Pretty and cool. now those of us at King 5 have to turn oh. our attention towards Sochi and the Winter Games. Yeah, so in this time slot, the 7.30 slot, you'll be seeing the Ozone on King 5. We at Evening Magazine will be back at the end of the month. Next on NBC, how to raise an Olympic athlete for all of us here at Evening Magazine and Teen Evening. Good night from the Super Bowl champ. Ah!